Hey there, it's Tracy here from the Papercraft Studio. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Santa Express uh, Ferrero box. So you can see here, it holds three Ferrero Rocher, stands up like that, that's from the side, that's from that side. Um, and I've used this really cute paper from uh, Santa Express, <laughs> that's hence the name. And I've managed to get it so that the pattern follows up like this. So if you do have a pattern, I'll show you how to cut this and it's really important to stick it the right way around when we're putting it together. So only a few supplies you need for this. You need a piece of basic white cardstock and this measures seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter. You need a piece of your designer series paper and this measures three and three quarters by four and a quarter. And then you just need some scraps of white. Oh, <laughs> my little star, a snowflake there is got a bit crumbled. That's um, cut out from the white glimmer paper, but you could use silver, gold, whatever you like here. And just some of this uh, elegant trim twine. So lots of scoring and cutting. Um, I have got a template as well. Um, just looking around for it that I could let you take a photo of actually maybe i'll do that after we've done let's do it now while i remember so i'm going to bring in something that's darker color so what you're looking to end up with can you see that okay a little bit needed a bit of a uh, bigger piece of paper here let's use this designer series paper here. so can you see that on oh, there no, that's better See, it's all in shot. So that's what you want to end up with. Although it's going to be kind of that way around. Does that fit in? Yeah, it does. So this is the top here. That's that piece. And then this is all the other folds down here. Okay, so just take a quick snapshot if you wanted that one. You can always rewind me and go back. But that's what you're aiming for, okay? So let's get started with the scoring. So I'd um, definitely... Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm probably giving you a headache there. Oh, that would have been loud. Uh, simply scored scoreboard. I definitely recommend that. And you want this, first of all, on the shorter side. So the seven and three quarters, okay, um, up here. So, line shot, yes. So you want to score at half an inch. Half an inch, my least favourite score because it's so far over this way. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and uh one and seven eighths of an inch on both sides okay so half an inch and one and seven eighths on both sides okay and then turn to the the eight and a quarter inch side and you're going to score again at half an inch at one and seven eighths at three and a quarter four and five eighths and this is the important bit on the um on six you are only going to score to the second score line here okay and then once you get there you're going to flip it over so you've still got this section is your your top you've got your six inch mark down here and you're just going to score again at six inches down to that second score line okay so i'll get rid of this and try not to bash the camera this time okay so i don't know how easy that is to see but this is the section at the top where we scored all the way down on these ones, all the way across on these ones, but these two here at the top, you only score to the center and um, we're not going to fold those. So fold the rest um, of all your score lines. Just checking if I normally score that way. It's thrown me because this one's going a different way because we flipped it over. Okay, so this um, can look quite complicated to cut, but if we go step by step, then um, we'll be all good. And um, yeah, pause me, rewind me, whatever you need to do. Um, but if you follow the way I'm doing it, then um, we'll be all good. Okay, so don't forget we're not folding where we've only got those part score lines at the top. Okay, so I can do a little scribble on here actually to show you which bits we're taking out. So at the top here, so the big big section here is the the top like that. Um, so you've got all the other smaller folds down here, the big one at the top. So you're going to take out these two sections here on both sides. Uh, on this one, it's just this little tab. Don't worry, we'll go through this step by step. 
Um, I've got to think here. On <laughs> this one, it's those two. This one, it's just that tab. And then at the bottom, uh, we're taking out this, but also a little section, a little kind of snip in either side here. Okay, so again, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's bring this one back in. You can take a quick screenshot of that if you like to show you the bits that you're going to be uh, removing. I don't know if that helps, but we will go through step by step anyway. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and start snipping. So we're going to start off by taking these uh, these two sections here, either side from the top. So I'm just going to spin it round so that I can cut this way. So only down to that part score line, okay, on this one. So just coming straight down here in the middle section and then coming straight across there, okay? And then the same on this side here. It's hard for me to see in this light the um, score lines. Okay, so that's where you should be so far. Um, next, we're going to, let's work on the bottom here. So we're on this really tiny fold here at the end. We're going to come in slightly, like I said, so you're going to take out these two sections. So you, you can either just cut straight up there, straight across, and then do a little flower pot there. It might be easier, okay? So do the same on this side. So straight across to the middle section, straight up and then just flower pot that long section. So it's like a trough more than, oh, go on Tracy, get it in there. It's more like a trough than a, <laughs> than a flower pot because it's so long. Okay, that's where we should be so far. Again, it's probably useful if I just keep this piece here actually because um, you can see much better where we're up to. Okay, so next we're going to uh, cut these two and these two pieces off oh no ignore that we're not at all next <laughs> we're going to cut up these score lines here okay so i've got it now turned sideways just going to cut straight up these score lines to the center it's so much easier doing it in an order so flip it around the other side and again Pass the first one up to the second score line on each of these tabs. You can take your time doing this. Get nice straight edges. <laughs> okay, now we're going to tuck all these ones out the way and I'm just going to take off this edge piece, uh, this final flap here on these top two. So get rid of that one. Turn it round. I'm just tucking those under just to move them out of the way. Get rid of this one. So they're both the ones nearest the top section, okay? So that's where we're at at the moment. And then again, on these two, from the side, we're going to flower pot them. So uh, if you haven't seen my videos before, it just means coming in slightly at the bottom and going up into that corner. So we're just taking off a little triangle on both sides. Okay, and turn it around, do the same on this side, cut into the corner on both of those. Okay, uh, now we're going to skip this next one and we're going to do exactly the same as we've done here on this one here. So it's one, two, three down, okay, from this big section at the top. So ignore the one, we're going to take that out fully in a minute, but we're just going to fold I like to just fold these out the way and just work on the one I'm working on. So the one nearest this long flap at the bottom, we're not taking anything off of that. So just the one above it, we're just taking off that final tab and then just doing a little flower pot up into the corner on those. Opposite side, so again, leaving this one alone, which is next to that big trough, tucking those out the way and just cutting off this final tab and then cutting in those to make a flower pot shape. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen before, but that's why I call it a flower pot shape because it is, <laughs> that's what it looks like. 
Okay, so final bit of cutting. We need to take the whole section here. That's why I cross all of it out. So the second one down from the top. Um, so again, you can tuck these other ones out the way. And we're just going to come up and take that right off. Like that, okay? So now you've just got a gap there. Tuck that one under, tuck that one under. And just get rid of that. So, ta-da! Is that what you've got? I hope so. I'm hoping now. That's right as well. Pretty sure it is. Um, it's um, <laughs> when you're cutting it live, it's a bit more scary. But look, here's my template. Yay! It's the same. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Uh, shall I? Actually, I'll keep it there just so you can see, see what I'm doing because white on white is not that easy. So um, I'm using the, I think this is called the Love Me, Love Me something label. I'll, mm, I haven't got my catalogue right there. It's in the main catalogue. Anyway, you'll see you'll see the, the shape of it. Um, you could use um, different shaped punches to do this bit. It might be that you have an old label punch or something that will do it. But essentially... Um, we're going to cut a hole in this section here and we're going to do it before we put the designer series paper on because we don't want to go through too many layers. So what you're going to do is fold this and this over. So the bottom two here. So you've just got the small one and this one. And then you're going to come in if you're using this punch. Label me lovely. That's what it's called, I think. I'm going to slide this in. And what we don't want to do is go above this section here. So we just want to create this window. So I'm centering it either side here and then going just under halfway down the, the straight bit of the punch here. Make sure I'm roughly in the middle. Oops, I was, but I moved it. And then give it a big pinch and you're going to have that little bit in there. And actually the bit I didn't tell you we need as well is a piece of... Um, window sheet but I'll tell you um let's see the measurement of that is two and a half by two and a half on the window sheet and it's scored at one and a quarter you have to fight a bit with the window sheet to um to score it but you can get that okay so this is the important bit is how to cut um your paper if you've got a pattern if you've got something like this no problem it will just you know happily work or the dots or whatever um, but if you've got a pattern that's important to have it up the right way and if you want it to follow on, like I want this piece to follow um, the pattern, this is how you cut it. OK, so I'm going to use this edge of my um, of my trimmer here because um, I only want one and one eighth here. So I'm going to trim this from the bottom um, to start with because that's the piece I want at the base. So one and one eighth on this side of the trimmer. Just get rid of the scoring tool. Just trim that. And then slide this along again to one and one eighth and cut that. So you'll be left now with two inches on this top part here. And you can keep that in order like that because you need to know uh, the pattern, how it follows on. Right, so now because this is going to fold up like this, it's important that you stick your paper the right way. So it would be tempting, I think at this point, because that's the way up the box goes, is to stick the paper that way. But it's not like that. Um, you need to turn it round so that you've got the small flap at the top. And then let me just check. I still have to check here. Fold it up if you're not sure. But this is going to be, so the one furthest away from here is going to be the base. That's going to be the second layer. And then that's going to be the top. So actually the one nearest this flap is your, let's bring in the pattern here. So the one nearest the top is actually your second piece of the pattern here. And we've now we've got this small piece at the top. That's the right way up. OK, and then this one is going to go here. So when it folds back round, it's going to be the right way. It will all make sense. But just make sure if you've got a pattern um, that your bottom piece goes nearer you here and the next piece up goes here and obviously you don't want to glue in this middle bit here so the easiest way I found to do this was just to go around 
so it needs to center um show you on here it needs to center in each of these sections okay you can see they're not butting up to each other here and here so um you want to go around the edge oh, of the middle <laughs> it's gonna be my glue that doesn't work I'll try this one so go quite near the middle not too close but also don't go too far up to the score line because you need that little um, eighth of an inch gap and then come out this way a bit as well but just again if in doubt do less you can always tuck some more under so again with the pattern now facing this small little tab at the top you're going to stick that one down oops yep that's where i need to go so here there's a little border all around there and there okay and do the same with this one so i don't want it butting up to this i want to leave that gap all the way around so let's put the glue on here not too far down Tracy <laughs> nearly caught myself out there okay if you're using this side no problem at all you can do it in any order whichever way up um, so some papers oops it really won't matter um, but with this one I just wanted to have the scene following the line okay so that's now stuck in place and to then get that um now it's going to look upside down because this is the way the box is going to go essentially but these are going to wrap around so you can see there they're, they're going to be in the right place but we need to recut this hole here so what you do is you take it now from this side flip it over like that and then re-punch this shape um, so you want to slide the punch in and not see any white. So obviously too much white there. Just keep pulling it back down until you've got it lined up exactly around where you cut before. It doesn't matter if you go a bit lower, but then you're only cutting through two layers of um, designer series paper, not two layers of cardstock plus two layers of DSP. Um, otherwise your punch might get a bit stressed. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's in the right place now looking good so um with this bit folded over you can see i didn't quite get mine but it doesn't matter because i got enough of it and i didn't go back over the white fold this um edge edge flap over this bottom edge oh no 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 before we do that we're going to do the window sheet sorry on my notes i have this in the right order <laughs> and um yeah i wasn't following it then so I've got a piece of window sheet here. Like I said, this was two and a half by two and a half and I've scored it at one and a quarter on one side. And you have to be quite tough with it when you score it and then bend it over, meet the edges and really go over with your bone folder um, to get that nice crisp crease there. So that's going to be like that. And I've gone ahead and just popped on here how I've attached it. So on the outside edge, the bit where... Um, yeah, so it's not in there. It's on this bit. I've just put four pieces of tear and tape. Can you see that? Um, in the in the corners because I obviously you don't want anything sticking here, and it's just going to go over this area. So the way I found it easiest to do this was to stick one side first, line it up with the fold here, and then once that's stuck, you can stick this side. So on one side, peel off the backing of the tear and tape. Like I say, just put little pieces on because you don't want it to come down too far. Line it up with this with that fold there, roughly in the middle. And then just oops. Actually, I might just bring that up to that. Flip it over there. <laughs> that was easier. So you can see there I've just got that attached so that it's going to then be in, right in that crease there in the middle of this section. And then with this piece, you can just take off the uh, backing of the tear and tape. And then this piece can just, it, it's quite tough, so it will just pull itself over and stick to that piece there, okay? So then you've got that piece in the window. And when you come to fold it up, you can push it back down a bit because it will fight you, okay? And then it, it creates that nice, neat fold for you. Okay, so now we're going to fold this piece over. So that's the right side. So we're, we're essentially putting it on the right side, but I just like to fold it over. And we're going to put some tear and tape 
along this piece here so you don't have to fold it over you could just do it from this side if you like so it's um along here you could use glue if you'd prefer so i'm just going to show you before i take the tape off um how this is going to stick down so you fold then let me just think fold that edge over i haven't taken it off yet but you would fold that edge over and then push that down flat so you just see the whole scene and that will pin it in the right place okay so take this backing off i always try and design these so that you can just flip it over so you've got those you're just looking at the whole scene and that piece is just going to stick to that back one there and then you can just manipulate it again to get that box shape okay so now you can go ahead and stick this one on. The reason we didn't stick it on um, initially is because it's tempting to put it on this side, which is the same side as this, and that's the wrong side. Believe me, it happened a couple of times in class. So yeah, it's it's good to do it in a little bit of an order and then um, it all goes on the right way. <laughs> I know this seems a bit complicated, but and it is, but just take your time, you know, pause the video, whatever, like I said, because it is worth it in the end. So this has got a little border again, all the way around. And there we go. So that's our scene. All following up here, we've got the base of this tree, then that one, and then the top of this little kind of globey tree there. Okay, so the last thing we need to do, and the reason I don't do this when we cut it initially, is you're going to fold those two tabs in, and this one's going to slot in here. And it's probably too much at the moment because we haven't cut any ends um but what you want to do is take the tiniest slither because you can see mine here is quite loose and that's because i took too much off each side of this tab okay so the best thing to do i've found since then is to um just take a slither off one side and then try it again so these two kind of side tabs go in like that and then you're working on just this folded piece here so i'm just going to take the tiniest bit off of there you can see i mean it, i can't even see where it went on here to be honest there it is tiniest tiniest piece and then i'm just going to tuck that in and see how we're doing so that's actually quite a snug fit i could take some off that side if i want but i might just leave that because that's really secure obviously one end you're going to need to pop your um treats in uh, I've called this a Ferrero box, but you could put uh, the big Lindor balls in there as well. Um, I know not everyone can eat nuts, always a nuts fan. I personally love these. Um, so there we go, three fit in really nicely there. And so this end again, you close those two tabs and then have a little look. Probably not going to go. Just trim the tiniest bit to start with because you can just go back and trim more. Um... Yeah, I'm going to trim on this side now as well. Also, it kind of depends how you've cut it. You know, the score lines are a bit bumpy. So, but just take little bits off at a time and then it will be just right. And you can see they're not going anywhere. Fab. Okay, I'll take that away now. <laughs> um, so, on my original here, we just got a little bit of decor. So, again, I've used this um, elegant trim twine. Um, not everyone likes doing these loops because it can get a bit fiddly but um so do them or not as you wish um i just wanted something um sparkly underneath so the way i do it um i take about eight inches of twine or you can just use it off of the reel um it's fine and then where i want it to be or where i want it to start i put a glue dot um so I think it's going to start about here. So attach one end to the glue dot, wherever you want it coming out. And then bring this back round. You need quite big loops here because it's going around here and you've got that going across. So I'd have one fairly near the bottom. Now that's stuck back onto that one glue dot. And I'm going to put another glue dot now on top just to secure that in place because this is too thick to just keep going back to the same um glue dot when we used to have really thin twine oh i can't get my finger off it was fine to do that but now this one will either play ball or it won't so 
If it plays ball, you can twist it and bring it back round on itself here. If it doesn't, just snip it there and start again, okay? So I'm going to put that kind of up there. I've got a feeling then this one, oh no, might not be too tricky. But like I say, if it is at any point, just snip them and, and do three separate loops. But again, another glue dot on top. So it gets quite bulky at this stage underneath. And then another one I kind of want near that loop at the top and I try and make them slightly different sizes actually but they all look <laughs> quite similar I don't know if this is fighting me a bit I might trim that um, and then just do this loop on its own because I need it to come nearer the top I think because that let it snow is going to go across so let's make it slightly different to that other one this is why some people find it a bit stressful because they they can take a while to do but like i say if you do three individuals it's much easier so i've gone ahead and cut out of some um basic white this this um sign here so i've used sorry uh, the joyful wishes no, sorry joyful flurry bundle um i've used the let it snow here and i've used the matching dies um, so you get this one here and then also a small snowflake and like I said I've gone ahead and cut the um, a little glimmer snowflake here let me just grab this so I've already gone ahead and cut that but that's to go on there as well so this time we're using um, a coastal gabbana sorry I know I'm crashing, <laughs> crashing around again no we're not we're using Bermuda Bay sorry um, quite similar but this one's darker and it's in this designer series paper and depending on which piece of the paper you you cut this is more of the base so this is the darker one and it goes up kind of like in an ombre so you might get the lighter one depending on which bit you um you cut so let it snow let's ink that up oh I'm trying not to get my head in I'm gonna bring it down to me a bit okay so nearly there we're going to put this on um i think i might try and balance it out with um some dimensionals because you can see here this one i stuck did i oh no, i did put dimension under there but it can go a bit bumpy which can look quite cool as well but i'm gonna put some under here and then maybe under this bit here as well so flip it over I'm going to put one on that end. I'm just going to see. I'm going to put one right at the edge under that bit there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Move my light. I'm not giving myself a lot of room here tonight. I'm not going to worry about the middle too much because there's a lot of bulk there with the, um, with the loops. Okay. And then uh, I popped it here, didn't I? Our little snowflake. So rolled up glue dot in the middle of there or some glue. And then pop that on the end. And then finally, we need some bling, of course. Bling, 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 again. Now, did I put it away after filming my last one? There it is. Okay, so just the uh, regular rhinestones and we're going to pop one in the centre of the snowflake and then just a couple down here. But of course, you can bling away to your heart's content. I put one on top of this tree. Um, you know, if you've got a pack at home, <laughs> go for it. Um, because it's Christmas. <laughs> okay, so there you have it, my uh, Santa Express Ferrero box. I hope you enjoyed making that. Take care, see you soon. Bye. <laughs>